Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here on Ravenport. We are going to carry straight on from where we left off in the last episode. So let's get to it. On this bad boy right here. At this end, I've got four pallets, so I want two to come down here. Remember, we did have one or two of the pallets were the old ones, the non-refillable ones. So those we've got to do a bit differently. Um... I think was from that point there. So they weren't all 10,000 litre pallets either. So we've got the two on there. And we've got one up on the other bit. That's a wool pallet on the back. We've got one egg pallet there. If I grab the one there a minute. And then we'll go up to the other end. We'll take two pallets up to the other end. I think this will all work out nicely. Right. Take you. Like that. Empty pallets. There we go. See? All works out quite nicely. So we'll run you up this way. And we'll very neatly and tidily drop you down into here. Oh, on in you go. Just nudge you up a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Right, so we've got us six, six pallets in here. You're going to do it like that, aren't you? Ha ha ha! Oh, that was beautiful. Yes. Right, okay. That was actually really well done. I didn't expect it to do that. Um, we're going to get <laughs> I'm quite pleased about that. We're going to get two more. And we'll run these two over to the far end. We want one, two down the other end. And I want four down here if I could get four. See, this is, this is the problem that I've got. Is that the, the pallets are going onto the forks but they're not coming off the forks very easily try and take them off the forks once we get them over to the, the thing but yeah it is a bit of a nuisance trying to get these things off of pallet forks sometimes sometimes it doesn't quite work as you'd like it to It'd be a lot easier if probably be better if I put the trailer somewhere a bit more level I've got I've actually got six pallets over this side so I don't need any more there while I'm here, I may as well drop one off. I'll drop one off. Because I'm going to have to leave it like this. Helper F has got a full grain tank. See? Like this. Really doesn't like it, does it? Right. Swing you around a bit. Is that too high or too low? I don't know. I think it may have been a little bit too high. It's, that might be better, though. Let's just bring that one in here and gently lower it down. Like that. Right. That's perfect. So we've got seven on that one. I'll go around to the other side of this one and I'll pick that one up. And then we can run that down. We need four pallets at the one in the middle. And I think it's two pallets at the one at the far end. And I don't know how many I've got. I might have just enough here. We may have enough to do six pallets on each. In which case, I've left one too many up here. Which I shouldn't have done. Right. And you can see right there, because I didn't get it quite straight, I've now got... I've, I've done that wrong. I've, I've picked that pallet up wrong, so I could very well have issues with trying to let that pallet go. Now, I'll put you into there. And I'll unload you like that. Right, so we've got that bit on okay. And then... Back over here, it's wool pallets at the front. I've got five pallets left on here, egg pallets. So we might, we're going to be all right for the egg pallets, I think. I'll bring you around. Right, so we're, we're, we're kind of lined up there. Now I want to line up down here, and it, it's getting it right on the edge here. Okay, I've got that. I can pick up two of them. The thing is not allowing them to slide back onto the forks too far, which I'm not having much luck with. They are sliding back onto the forks too far, which means I'm going to have trouble getting them to come off the forks. Actually, it wasn't too bad. I did think that was going to be more difficult than that. If I nudge you up there a minute... Okay, now I will switch over to the combine a second and we'll get that one unloaded. Well, actually, I'm going to switch over to this one there. 
Uh, go and park this one just underneath the combine. He can carry on. He can do that again. At least I'm hoping he can because of having to come back over and tip out again. So we may have a bit of trouble there. We've got one bit there where he wasn't able to unload properly. So put you under him. That. And stop. Okay, yeah, you can carry on there. You're doing fine. Next up, back to you. I've got... Okay, I'll go around the other side and I'll get those two pallets off of there. Rip them off that side. And then I've got three wool... I'll run the wool pallets over to near the sheep and then we'll, un we'll have to unload those one at a time, I think. I don't think I'm going to be able to do it any other way. Right there. Ooh. Very carefully. Bring them down like this. I know that this is a little bit of a fiddle around, but keep in mind that we did just pull in nearly half a million dollars, mostly from these eggs. So having to move these around like this, sort of do this bit of maneuvering and messing about with the pallets, it's a small price because we don't really do very much else with the chickens, do we? It's not a huge amount that we're doing with the chickens. Right, I, we're not really earning our half million dollar bonuses from all of these chickens. Not, not when you think about it, are we? Right? So having to just mess around with the pallets every now and then, I think that is a small price to pay. And it does kind of offset the huge amount of money that does come in from them. So I'm, personally, I'm quite happy that we do have to have this little bit of faffing around with the um, egg pallets. I think it seems fitting somehow uh, some of you may not like it some of you may think that this is you know it's, it's a tedious type of task but uh, then it's kind of like the um, the silage you know the silage that we get that we want to sell anywhere the biogas plants um, over here uh, at the barn wherever you know you, you've got a lot of work to do to get your silage ready and then and then to be able to sell it you don't, you know, there's not like a massive penalty for it though, is there? Right, I'm just going to stop you there a second. I'm going to switch over to... Yeah, you, you can just do whatever you're doing. I'm, I'm going to ignore you for a minute. I'm going to put those on there. And then we'll run over by the sheep and then we'll grab... You know what? We can slow time down again now. Uh, we'll run over to the sheep over here and then we can start unloading these three pallets here. And put them down onto the platform. So if I put the lorry right there. Like that. Take that one off. And then that one off. How are we doing with our crop at the moment? Fruit type growth. Uh, that'll be tomorrow. Tomorrow that'll be ready to harvest. We've got the wheat over there. We'll get the wheat harvested tonight I think. We'll start you up. I'll run you over towards the sheep. And then that bit's going to be done. We don't need yet. Yeah, chickens, chickens are all dealt with now. We've made our vast fortune from them. We bought four new fields from them. We'll run over to the wool a minute. I get that one up there first. Great Mandat restaurant. What are you buying at the restaurant, I wonder? Go back up through here. Restaurant. Sugar beet. I have no sugar beet to sell. I've got no intention of selling any sugar beet at any point. So that doesn't affect me in the slightest. Right. Let's grab you off of there. So there's the first pallet. We'll put this one down. Again, you know, we get $20,000 for each full pallet of wool. It's not quite the same as we get from the chickens. The chickens are definitely the big money earners, it would seem. Once, once you get things set up with those chickens, the way that we had them, you know, the way that we've got them now, it would appear that the big money item in this game is chickens. By a long way, by a very considerable margin. And, I mean, you... you half a million dollars, and most... 60,000 was from the wool. The rest of it was from the chickens. Right? So, we got almost a half a million dollars from those chickens. From, what, three days egg production? From four large pens? That's insane! Like, that is that is genuinely insane. The, the sheer volume of cash that's coming in. We have got it on easy settings, though. We, we've got to make sure, we we got to remember that we do have it on easy settings. So it, I mean, this this is good. We do want it on easy settings. Having it on easy settings 
means that we've got the option for all of these things. We've got the option for um, you know, being able to buy things and sort of keep things moving along quite nicely. We're going to use the landscaping mod to, not mod, the, the, the tool. We're going to use the landscaping tools to go up here and landscape around the edges of these fields. We're just kind of smooth it off before we start doing any plowing up there. We want to smooth everything off so that we can get a good um, a good level field at the finish of it. We won't worry about doing that just yet. Obviously, we, we need to get the harvest done first. So after we've done the harvest, and then when we're ready to start doing our plow, we're going to go and get a new plow. We're keeping the plow we've got. We're just going to buy another one to go with it. Over here. Actually, I don't know if we can afford to buy one. Or if we are going to... Wait a minute. Let's have a look. How much are the plows? Because there's only one plow. It's, it's going to have to be... Yes, right. We can afford that one. We can't afford anything bigger. I'd like that one, really. But we don't have the... We don't have anything to pull it. There is these. Although that requires 300... Oh, that's 200 horsepower there. That's a... That's 15. Okay, I'm not quite sure which way round this is. Because that's... That says 15 meters wide. But that looks like it's a wider one. Basic crumbler rollers on the back. Spike tooth leveler on the back. Basic. Uh, no back hitch. Why would you have a back hitch? Oh, let's put a seed drill on the back, isn't it? I think that is. I think it's to put a seed drill on the back. So that one there, that's uh, 50 foot, it says. Right, and then this one here. I'm not quite sure which one is which, because one says 25 meters and one says um, it's not 25 meters. So I, 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 I'm not quite sure which is which, to be honest. The idea, though, is that this will do the plowing. Um, but our tractor is not going to pull that. We would need a new tractor to be able to pull that. We can pull this one. Even though that does say 300 horsepower, I'm confident that our little tractor could pull it. Well, at least I, I think it could. So look in our garage. What are you... What, what 240 horsepower? You're 200... And, actually, it probably wouldn't. You know, it probably wouldn't pull it. I'm thinking that maybe we need to lease a bigger tractor. We'll lease a tractor. All right, well, let's... Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to put you over here a minute. You can you can just park right there. We don't need to do anything else with you just yet. We'll stop you there. And the sheep. How many sheep have we got? That's what I wanted to see. Uh, we're on to 50 sheep now. That's pretty good going. Okay, we want to go to you next. And as I suspected, the combine decided to stop partway through. So I will move you along a little bit. We can get this field finished, and then we can get the next field done. I don't think we're going to be able to fit the whole crop into this trailer. That's fine, though. We don't mind that. We can work around it. So I'll leave you there, and then I will go up to the combine a minute, and I can go... We'll combine down round here, and we'll just get the little tiny bits that are left down here first. Then we can swing back round, and we can go and get the other bits up the top. Um... We've got the... Oh, what was I going to say? I can't remember now. Completely gone. Yeah, with, with our tractor, we've got to decide whether we're going to lease a tractor or if we're going to go and buy a tractor. If we're going to buy a tractor, we're going to at least have to sell the tractor we've got. We've got $1 million in loan. So we're, we're going to want to do any... If we're, if we're going to go and buy a bigger tractor, we're going to want to do that tonight before... Um, nightfall and before we have our loan interest and everything like that just so that we've got the maximum amount of money available now I don't mind doing it with the Lemkin plow I think that will work out alright let's just go to here this is the easiest way to actually see what we can do with it uh, we'll come up here onto the field right the thing is though we've got like quite a big area up here we've got a couple of trees down over here there's a lot of land on the side here that I think we could uh, smooth out so that we can start using it. There is the mod now that allows you to plow using the cultivator, which I could get that one activated. So we've got all of that over there that we kind of want to level out a bit. 
And then there's more leveling to do over here. There's those three trees to remove. There's no other trees to remove. And then the field comes right down here to a point. I don't think we would do anything down here. We wouldn't bring it down as that, that far. We'll bring it to about here. And we'll just do a circle round. And we'll go to about that far away from the rail. So we're close, we'll are close. we go closer to the rail than we are now. The only issue that we would have with that is... That's an active rail with trains that go racing along there on a fairly regular basis. So we don't want our tractors turning round and getting catapulted off into the middle of nowhere by the actual trains. That would be a little bit of a disaster. You know, I think that no matter who we are, we could consider that to be a bit of a problem. A, a bit of a disaster, a, a bad thing. I'll swing you round. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the hide help going on this again as soon as we've done. Uh, I'll just start it down onto this bit. Um, and we'll start moving up through there. Just like that. There we go. Right. The hide help going on there. Yep. And I want to go down to you. 29,476 litres of wheat. We're going to go and put this into storage for a minute. And then I'm hoping that combine will hold the rest of the wheat in its tank. And then we can unload that as we go through. We won't worry about doing any planting at the moment. Planting we will do once we've got the... Well, actually, I suppose we could start planting. No, we'll, we'll start planting when we're doing our... Um, uh, doing the ploughing up in the other field. So we get that one going into there. It's how we do this other field. Do I sell the two tractors that we've got? Because, I mean, this is this is going to make a big field up here, isn't it? Right? That's quite a bit bigger, especially if we start expanding out around the edges. That's quite a bit bigger than anything else that we've got at the moment. That bit's going to go. I know I've got some good regular income with the chickens there. And we will be able to cover most of the expenses. But just getting, it's, it's getting started. We are going to go into debt, especially if we start thinking about borrowing, um, about leasing a, a bigger tractor so that we can pull a bigger plow. I like the idea of a bigger plow. That, that's definitely going to make life a lot easier for us. If we go with the whole cultivator thing. And there is that mod that we can... I haven't got that mod activated at the moment, but it's definitely a serious consideration because then we could use one of these for doing the ploughing. And, I mean, I'd like to use one that I think would be a, a little bit more sensible for doing ploughing. Something like that, possibly, but that's only four metres wide, which is not great. Uh, here, what's that one? That's, yeah, that's that's huge. But that's only disc cultivators. That's that's a disc cultivator there. It's, that's not really what you'd want for doing... Pl you know, it doesn't seem like a plow, does it? We've got power harrows. We've got cultivators down here. These. These are more like chisel plows. This is the sort of thing that you'd have in the States, isn't it? Something that's a bit more like a chisel plow. Uh, that one there. That Amazon right there, right? This is eight metres wide. And even looking at the cultivated times, this looks like a chisel plow. So if I've got the mod active that allows us to create fields using cultivators, I think this is the one that we want. It does require 400 horsepower to pull. So if we were to go and get that one, right, we lease that one. And then we can go into here. We want a large tractor, so it's saying 400 horsepower. Now, I've had people asking me if I can use a T8. Um, it seems to be that one of the most requested tractors at the moment on any series is a T9. I really like the T9. I think the T9 is really good. Um, I don't know quite what it is, but I, I've grown to... I thought it was really weird to start with, especially with this bit on here, but I actually really like the appearance of the T9. I think it looks quite cool, especially when you start going, because you can go for the twins. You've even got triples on here, and for our plowing job, I would seriously consider using triples. We'll find a way to get the triples so that we can have them up on the top. We got, we'd have to... That's going to be... Actually, that could be quite interesting, getting, getting the vehicle up there with the triples. That could be quite cool. Uh, to lease... 21,000. It's expensive to lease, but it might be a better option. 
And then, of course, you've got the Challenger over here. Now, we know the Challenger looks quite cool. Uh, we've got the Fent 1100. Now, that's a 500-horsepower tractor as it is. Uh, again, that one could be quite cool. I could go for that one as well. I'm going to have a serious think about this. Think about which one we might go for. We've got the, the various snakeskin ones. I've got a Class Axion over there. That one does actually power up quite nicely. Um, it's got the engine set up there that goes all the way up to 445 horsepower. That's, that is a bit of a beast, but I mean, we've got that one elsewhere, I think. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. So right now, we need to go back to our combine. We've got most of that done. I start you up a minute. We just want to finish off doing our little bit of harvest right here, and then we can get going with the rest of it. That's the last of the grain up through there. I've just got... Well, I can see one little patch over there, but I can't actually see any grain over there. So if I go racing over this way... No. I'm not quite sure what it is. You know how you get sometimes in distance, you see like a little bit that's uh, sort of stuck out and left over? I had a little bit that was stuck out and left over. It was it was a great and terrible mystery, but um, it's now been solved. Uh, it was nothing. There it is. It's a great and terrible mystery. Well, actually, I think there probably is some grain left over there. It's just that the game, it's like it, it's there, but it isn't. It's there, and if we go over it with the combine, we might get one or two liters of grain come up, but there's not actually anything that we need to worry about. So we're going to run up the road a second, and we're going to harvest the other bit. That won't take very long. And then once we've harvested that other bit, we can then... Well, we'll fast forward the night, because we've got the soybeans up at the top, and we want to get those harvested. And then that's going to be about it, just for a minute, at least until we've managed to do our little bit of... Um, plowing and I've, I've decided that we will go for the culty plow type situation and we'll do that so we use the chisel plow approach rather than using the traditional plow approach because it's more in keeping with what would have been well what is done in the US at least as far as I know I'm not trying to tell you how you do things in the US because quite frankly I don't have a clue uh, I'm, I'm, I'm literally just going on what uh, people have said. And I've been frequently told that a chisel plow is far more realistic for the US than any other type of plow. Uh, so that's what we'll go for. We'll go for a chisel plow. And go sliding on up through here. So if you watched the live stream, you will have seen that, the you know, well, I'm, I'm hoping because obviously I do have to record this before the live stream. Uh, but if you watch the live stream, I'm hoping that there was a nice little treat for you in there. And it also means that uh, we, we should be getting said treat, which is the Anderson DLC, um, should be available for us to use on here in the next day or two. It depends how much recording I do beforehand and how much recording I do afterhand. You see where I'm coming from here? Um... So yes, I've been getting some feedback on how I do kind of the beginnings and the endings of the videos, and most of you seem to like it. It, it is a little bit abrupt, I'll admit, um, going from the uh, actual video to where I kind of got that pre-recorded message to say, look, I'm sorry, we have to stop here. Um, there's not really a lot I can do about that. The whole idea of this is that I... I'm, I'm, maybe I'll redo it and just have like a, a little bit of a, a pause or something in between um, like switching to it and me starting to talk on that bit. Maybe I'll do it like that, something like that. I'm, I'm not quite sure. Um, the whole idea of this is that I can record longer sessions. That gets me... I can do more in the week then. If I can record a longer session, I can do more in the week and I can get more work done. Um, I can get the videos done faster, which means that I also now have time. I mean, I'm not, I've, I've not started them, well, I didn't start them last week. I should be starting them this week. Some extra videos. It's not farming videos. So those of you who want more farming, unfortunately, you're going to be disappointed. But you do get the live streams. 
you do get the videos every day, you do get the time lapse, you know, you, you're doing pretty well for farming content, and you all know what I think about overdoing it. I think it's a terrible idea. Well, some of you do. Some of you may remember when I did burn out on FS17 and I had chopped the content right back because I just couldn't face the game any longer. And I get the distinct impression that there's not very many of you want me to do that again. So I don't have any plans to do that again. I would like to be able to keep playing the game. Doing it like this it keeps it fresh and it allows me to keep playing. Boulder Canyon series is being done slightly different. I don't have that cut off. I, um, I am recording that um, normally, but I do record that differently anyway. I don't have any sections that I cut out like I do with this. Uh, admittedly, I don't cut a lot of it out, do I? But I do sometimes cut bits out. And in order to be able to do that properly, I can't really do this on a timer because then I end up with videos that are too short or too long. And the whole idea of this is I need my channel to keep growing, right? This is this is my job. This is what I do. This is, this is my only job is YouTube. Uh, but in order for my channel to be able to keep growing, YouTube haven't actually stated, but it's been made quite clear. Longer videos are more frowned upon. They get suggested less often, and people in general don't like longer videos. So what I need to do is I need to keep, other than the Boulder Canyon, you get three videos that are just over 30 minutes. And those will stay around that length. Um, they're shorter than they were. They were over 50 minutes, but that's too long. Um, so they will be just over 30 minutes. Everything else, I am doing my absolute best to keep all of the videos under 30 minutes. Some of them have gone a little bit over, but I'm gonna, I would rather cut them off closer to 25 minutes than 30 minutes so that I keep them under 30 minutes, which means more, they're more appealing to more people. This is the whole idea. It's got to be more appealing to more people, and this is why we're doing this. This is why this change has come about. I um, would also like to state that this is also very, very beneficial to me personally and my family. It means that I'm able to get my recordings done more efficiently during the day, and I can then spend my later afternoons and evenings working on the editing rather than having to take up whole days doing that i can now do that so more of it in one in in during the day um after my children get home from school they can be they, they can hang around that they, they can do kids stuff they don't have to creep around the house like mice after they get home from school they can burn off energy they can talk to me and so on while i'm editing but they can't do while i'm recording and this new way of doing things means that I get to have that time with my family as well. I'm still producing the content. I'm still able to do it. It's just that this different approach is giving me more time with them as well as giving me the opportunity very soon to be able to start producing more videos for you. The only reason I didn't start doing it last week was because I've had a cold and so I've been resting up my voice a lot and getting some very early nights as well because my voice was really struggling last week. Uh, you may notice it at the moment that I've got, uh, you know, I'm, I may sound a bit like I've got a bit of a cold. Um, yes, this is an ongoing issue, and I'm hoping that it will very soon no longer be an ongoing issue, but you can appreciate that from a YouTuber's point of view, having a cold and having anything that threatens the integrity of our voice box is a rather serious matter. It's something that does need to be taken quite seriously. So. Um, I've been resting it this week and I have not been planning any additional content this week so that I have no risks of damaging my voice or having any um, long-term health issues with my voice box. I really, really, really could do without that. That would be an absolute disaster. We're not going to be able to fill all of that one up. So what we're going to do is take this one. I was wondering if we might be able to get away with not actually having to take the tractor up and unload, but we're not going to be able to. So we'll run this one up and we'll unload. I'm terribly sorry, folks. I'm afraid I'm going to have to interrupt things there. That is all we've got time for today. So if you've enjoyed the episode, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.